Right, 16th of March 2020. I just walked through the wood earlier. Okay, right near those big signals on the top. And I've just come, walked through the village. Went to the shop, got a bar of chocolate and some water. I've got a flask of hot water as well and a very small bottle of lemonade. This was quite um, dodgy, further round. Most of the time it was alright though. But just back there, there were some massive puddles and I had to do quite a bit of bramble fighting to, to get up on the side, but it was really high prickly hedges. Anyway, over there, look, for people who don't know, there is the Priory. St Augustine's, dedicated to Thomas and Beckett, who was murdered in Canterbury Abbey by four knights. So there's the the abbey that I talk about a lot, the priory I should say. I'm just doing a bit of family history at the moment on um, a Saint Ethelwith Swift. She is connected in my family tree back with the medievals. It's a bit jumpier in there but it does eventually link up down to Alfred the Great and all that. They, she's not at the moment she's probably linked to me by a more direct line but I've just gone the easiest route at the moment it's not the most the one there's but there'll be other routes back to her but at the moment I've done the one that's the most straightforward which um, is she, she's not seen as a, a relative as such although she is still connected um, she is still connected. It's a bit complicated. I can't do it without um, illustrations, really, because it's, it's new in my mind as well. But she is connected through marriage. There is a marriage where someone um, direct in my line marries into another family. And it's she's in that, f that family that they've married into. But there will be other routes to her. Because everyone married everybody in those days. Now, like I said, it's been quite quagmire-ish. And uh, but I needed to get out. There's all these restrictions. These what? Well, sort of fears about this virus that's killing people apparently. But it's not killing at the moment. It ain't really killing any more people than the flu. But there's this massive panic going on everywhere around the world. You know, so they've got to isolate people and all this apparently to stop it spreading m massively and killing. 80% of us, like the Black Death. Anyway, I come out at the moment, as so you don't know what, whether they will barricade this, the roads off. I mean, we don't know. They're doing it in Spain and Italy. They're actually stopping people leaving their communities. Unless it's for work reasons or you've got to get food. Anyway, look at this beauty. And I was talking about um, this... This young woman, they found her bones, they've done carbon dating, they're now on the DNA, we've got to wait for that to come through. And uh, she died a young, very pretty girl, she became a nun. She didn't want to marry some Northumbrian king, so she went into a nunnery. So it's just quite common how they've done all that in those days. They often did that sort of thing. Although someone said to me the nunneries were really brothels. But I don't know if that is true. Um, it could be some truth in it. Who knows, really? Who knows what to believe? Right, this is very, very boggy, everyone. But I've come from this direction. And I've got to try and squelch my way across. But this, this is very brambly here. It'll even up in a minute. It's just a section I've got to get through. It will even up. I always find it actually easier walking that side for some reason. Um, but at the moment I'm, I'm, I'm going along this bit. But I do feel better. I don't know when I'm walking on the other side. I don't know why that should be. But this is the sort of problems we're having. And the reasons we've got these problems is because we've had a lot of rain, a lot of very fierce storms and um, hence a lot of water. I've only got a little stretch to do and then it'll be up higher and I won't have all this. This is probably one of the worst parts of the walk but I don't really want to get my feet soaked at this stage. 
probably why I want to lead with the other foot is because this is the foot for some reason no matter what shoe I'm wearing always seems to get wet I've got no idea why that is it's one of those weird things so we're nearly there we can cross over it's still going to be a bit squelchy but that's the worst of it I hope so there we go there's some stables there yeah so I've been doing tree work I've got a hobby um, which I can do but I, I still like to have my walks I'm afraid because I, I get saturated with knowledge and information and data and and I need f fresh air so I do and to nourish my mind and my passion I have to go out reflect, walk, talk, uh, take photos, capture videos and all that sort of thing. Now of course this Elena Swift, she was from the 600 BC time. Her grandfather was um, Ethelbert I. He was a very, he's quite a well documented King of of Kent and of the House of Wessex as well was involved. They, you know, these different tribes were always fighting, and in the end, of course, Alfred the Great got all the tribes together and made one King of England in the end. But we had kings of Mercia, kings of Northumbria, kings of East Anglia, kings of Kent, and kings of Wessex, and some other ones. There's about seven kingdoms, and. Um, in the end, they did all merge into England. But anyway, this saint girl, she was um, in 600 and something. I think she was, might have been born in 614. And like I said, her grandfather was very famous, Ethelbert. He was one of the first kings, one of the first, to swear um, to become a Christian. And he married a Christian woman called uh, Bertha. I think it's Bertha, Bertha or Bertha. I, I think it's Bertha of the Franks, Princess of the Franks. And she's got a very rich <coughs> ancestry going back to uh, <coughs> Clovis and Charmaine and all that. So through another line, we would still be linked to... Um, Alana Swift because we've also got the Clovis and, when, and um, Charmaine in the tree so we could still make our way back to her a different way which I will do eventually but I'm just linked on to one particular way now through the Kings of Kent that link up with the Kings of Wessex and then we come back to Alfred the Great and then down through the tree that way when we're dark what's happening we're darting across the channel all the time over to France to Normandy to um, Italy all these places you know we, the people keep marrying and moving about that's what always happened people married for political and economic reasons Anyway, basically, a couple of years ago, during some work on a church in Folkestone, St Mary's, they found some old bones inside a part of the church, and um, they got to get permission, and they got permission to carbon date them. The deposit, and they to carbon up, come up with the right dates for when St. Ethelweth was about and um, they're now have also got royal approval to carry out DNA testing now so the carbon dating has proved they're the right age they've got her teeth I've got all this on the, on the line on the tree I've put all the images everything I can I always save any stories, any documents I put in a PDF and I save to the tree. I print some stuff off, but as you know, 
the printed stuff fades eventually so but if technology went down we've still got some records in print form and I do try to update the printed stuff every now and again even if it's only every five or ten years I do try to do fresh copies I also saved a disc and to card but as we know even they have a life so this is, a con this is really just a process of updating you, you should. I mean, all my discs that I did 13 years ago, 14 years ago, they're still fine. But I have updated them a lot. I share stuff a lot to other clouds uh, and things like that to, to, to maintain a record. And what I've been doing, so I've been going on about St. Elanisworth, and she... Uh, and all the stuff I've saved, I've um, now put on a DVD as well. Because when I went to Kent, I went to Canterbury and I went to Canterbury Abbey, Canterbury St. Martin's. And these are all tied up with her, although she was mainly based in Folkestone. But her ancestry, like Ethelbert and Berth Bertha, were um, based in Canterbury. Um, so... All those images I've got of the cathedral, of the abbey ruins, have now got a place on her tree as well, as a record, that I, I've been there, visited these places. It makes sense. You see, when you go to a place, you walk around and you absorb the history and read the documents take photos you absorb it you can transform yourself back in time almost so that's what I do and I'm very passionate about the tree and I've done a lot of work I'll get a, I do get a lot of people say oh thank you Sheila for all your hard work you've set me off on my tree I've helped people and um, this is what I try to do share Sometimes I might not share right away until I've done a bit more verifying, which means looking at various other documents and alternative bits of information to confirm the identity of these people. Now, people say, oh, no one could write and they want any documents. And yes, there were. My goodness, there were documents. Um, the Magna Carta, the Doomsday Book, they have massive records, land records, marriage records, tax records. And then before that you had the chroniclers, like Bede, he's a famous one, and the Anglo-Saxon Chronicles. So basically, no. Obviously it's in a different bloody language. The Romans... We're also used to record stuff. I hope we've seen the new one at the internet. That's why I do backup copies of paper copies and keep paper folders. If the internet goes down, I've still got my my written stuff, my my folders. And I'm sharing with people around the world because a lot of though I got all my children DNA tested, and I've provided them with information they're still not at that age where they really are that interested exactly they didn't mind when the DNA tested they didn't mind but they don't want to do they don't want to do any tree because to be quite honest I've done quite a bit for them on their father's side I've done a lot for them um, there's still lots and lots they can do themselves now if they got interested in it especially if technology does remain with us and databases become available they might be able to do their own research in the future because it never stops you see there's loads and loads and loads to do I mean I'm unindated with information trying to put it together to organise it it's really difficult because there's so much of it you know, I just, when I get on to side, like, just this saint, this lady saint, that's taken me away from recent centuries. It's, um, but it still needs to be done and recorded. And then I go off and I'll concentrate hard on that. So I do jump around a lot. Now, some people don't like that method. 
But as information comes, I jump on it. And I'll do quite enough to, to be able to leave it and go back to something else or go down another line. I don't like leaving ragged ends. What I normally do is get to a situation where I can just put stuff on hold for a little while, come back to it later. I do that a lot. Um, so, I, like I said, Zara knows a lot about certain parts of the tree. Um, all the other kids have been given um, f at least five generations for them to get their teeth into when they want to. And of course all our descendants, shared ancestors, people I've got shared ancestors with, they're pouring out of the woodwork now. Pouring out of the woodwork. So then I'm sharing it with them as well. And if a lot of people still haven't got very big trees or anything, what they're doing, ancestry, they're get, letting people do their DNA. But they then they've just got a really basic shell, they haven't got anything. And a lot of people don't always want to do the tree they want it all done for them that's one of the problems with society now people like to have it sort of on a plate if you like so anyway that's that I was just talking about the coronavirus and having hobbies so I've got lots to do in it indoors if we did have to totally be shut off everyone well, if they start putting roadblocks up and people guarding the fort unless I can't get out then um, I will have to uh, um, just stay at home and do my hobby um, I don't know what it's like here Sheila do you? do you think you can get around this way? Right? Yeah, I think so. Oh, it's very boggy indeed. Yeah, I, I, I've actually avoided this these lanes for the last couple of weeks because of this. But uh, I haven't today, but... Uh, you can see why I have avoided it. It's very, very boggy everywhere. I will be covered in mud when I get home today somebody walking along there with a pink top on here's the priory again so basically that little section of walk was coming up the bridleway reaching a little pathway now which will take me down to the priory it won't be muddy and then we go from there I'm ready for a little drink of water and um, some chocolate now. So there we go. Somebody coming up the lane. There's a farm over there. No cows out yet. Over and out. <laughs>